Hey guys, real quick, I wanted to touch base with you and uh, go over something with you that uh, Chief Acevedo put out today. He did an interview with CNN that was, in, in all truthfulness, interesting. He made some good points, and I will link in the description of this video the, uh, the full interview. But um, I'm not going to play the full interview. I'm just going to go over a portion of it with you. Um, he... He actually goes into talking about police unions, the, the labor leaders, and how they are um, need to step up and, and bring police violence to an end. And uh, I'm going to get to this right here. And uh, this is old good old Chief Acevedo in his office. So here we... I can get to play. Real life and real lives are at risk. And I ask the American people to please join with the police, stand together. Let's shift this to where it needs to be, to the voting booth. Pay attention to the hearts and of the people that we elect. And the reason this stuff happens is because too many people right now in this country that are throwing block, uh, bricks and, and damaging property never bother to vote. So All right, so I'm going to I'm going to disagree with the with chief at you know right here uh voting doesn't work anymore the the fraternal order of police owns most of the politicians the police unions own the politicians they throw so much money at them to get them put into office that somebody who's anti-police and or not necessarily even anti-police but believes in accountability can't get into office it's not going to happen. I'll give you, for instance, state of Louisiana, if you don't have the backing and the and an endorsement from the Fraternal Order of Police, you're not going to win an election. It, it's, it's unusual. So what we need to do is outlaw or ban police unions or, you know, designate the Fraternal Order of Police, which is nothing more than an organized crime syndicate, a domestic terrorist organization. Sorry, Art, I didn't mean to uh, interrupt you there, but I just had to throw that in there. So you have a choice. Lift up your voice, be heard in the voting booth, and continue to march peacefully so the focus remains on bad policing, criminal policing. And let's be real honest, this is not just about policing. It's about society and this disproportionality yeah. of the things going on in our country, from education to health to food to everything that we all as human beings Old, near and dear. So please, uh, please don't re don't react to that. If we just hug one another, the only thing that will happen to overcome hate is love and love and engagement. Let's engage and let's do what we can control, which is our own actions, our own hearts, and exercise without fail our right to vote. All right. So, talking about protesting, here's the thing about protesting. I have preached to protest peacefully for a long time. Other activists have preached to pro pro peacefully protest for a long time. The problem is peaceful protests aren't making a difference. They're not making any changes because the politicians aren't listening. The chiefs of police aren't listening. The union, the police officers on the street aren't listening. But they listen when protests turn violent. They listen when things aren't going their way, when they actually get put in harm's way and have their feet held to the fire, then they listen. So being able to, to have peaceful protests is great. I love it because nobody gets hurt, no property gets damaged, but unfortunately, that's not working. It hasn't been working. Now things have changed and it's not our fault. It's the police's fault. It's the politician's fault. It's the union's fault. Uh, Police Chief Azevedo, those are very strong words, and, and, and particularly you are uh, a Cuban immigrant, you came when you were four years old to the United States, and you are the police chief, the first such, in, in the city of Houston. So I want to ask you lastly, there have been reforms 
uh, planned, made. For instance, in Minneapolis, the police force did implement training on implicit bias, on mindfulness, de-escalation, crisis intervention. It did diversify the department's leadership. It did create tighter use of force standards. It adopted body cameras. In other words, it did all this stuff, but it did not work. Chief Azevedo, what is it going to take? How much reform? How many of these, you know, playbooks? What is it going to take? I'm going to interject again. Sorry. The reason it didn't work, the reason reform didn't work, is because the police unions control the department, not the chief of police. They have a bad officer. You can't fire him. You fire him a year later, he's back on the force with back pay because the union goes in and fights for him and uses collective bargaining and blah, blah, blah. You can't fire a crooked cop. So nothing changes. And the crooked cops, the ones that, that aren't crooked, have no fear of being held accountable for their actions because there are no, no consequences. That's the problem. Listen, uh, Christian, that, that's a great question. And here's my my response from the from my heart. What we're seeing is not just about the death of George Floyd. What we're seeing is a response to not just police brutality. What we're seeing is a response to disproportionality of wealth and everything else in this country. Let's not kid ourselves. Unfortunately, when policing when po when good policing happens, which happens every day in our country. It doesn't make the news. Tens of millions of contacts every year in very dynamic situations, it doesn't make the news. We're the most visible cog of government, and when we get it wrong, there's no excuse. We can't excuse it. We have to accept it. But don't kid yourself into believing that the rage is just because of what happens with police. It's about society from pre-K education all the way up. So please, let's, let's just keep moving the ball. I promise you that the police chiefs are willing to lead. We need police labor union leaders. It's time for them to either step up and be part of the solution, or we're just going to have to get elected officials to be uh, doing what they need to do, which is to do everything we can to weed out bad cops so we can lift up the very vast majority that are honorable professionals and really deserve our support. I agree 100%. But until you get the unions out of policing, it's not going to happen. And I'm not anti-union. Unions were put in place. Unions came about to secure safe working conditions and fair pay for, for people who are, you know, working class people. Then the police got into the unions and they just turned it into, they perverted it and turned it into something that... That, that protects bad cops, people that abuse people, people that, that, that break the law. The unions protect them. They have become organized crime syndicates. That's what the unions have become. And as long as, as they exist, as long as we allow them to exist, bad cops will not be held accountable for their deeds. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you again soon.